All Things Techie Podcast, brought to you by two tech junkies, Justin Dawson and Simon Lang. For more, visit www.allthingstech.ie for all things techie. I found a great website, and I want to ask our audience um, about projection mapping. Like, There's been some fantastic projection mappings that I've seen throughout 2018, especially on Armistice Weekend and um, oh, being over in Liverpool, seeing some being projected up on to the side of buildings and the side of the radio tower in Liverpool with all poppies. Um, you see some brilliant ones uh, throughout the years against Buckingham Palace uh, over in England. Um, even even New Year in Dublin, which will be coming up at the end of this month, um, you see Trinity College UG and College Green have the clock in front of the gates of Trinity College Dublin. You know, and there was some on the Customs House as well recently for the for them um, they had snowflakes falling um on the front of the customs house oh, and, the few, and um they've started using um it's a combination of the bridge lights mm. with projection mapping and stuff like that so it's no longer just the projection mapping it's the whole how do you light the room up kind of thing you know, instead of how do you light the city up and you project them it goes back to our uh, earlier topic, Simon. Is there going to be still a use for projectors? I think this is the new art form of projection. Um, but I was doing some read up and I was always curious of like, how do you learn about projection mapping? There's a great website and I'm going to put the link up in the show notes, projection slash mapping dot org, which has articles um, and it's it's PMC is the is the website, um, and it shows different ways that projection mapping is done, and um, the the software to use, what is projection mapping, and um, projection mapping for video games. Really great site. I, it's one that I've just uh, toyed around with in the past couple of weeks. So I don't know. Have you played around that with that as well? No, I haven't. But I was looking at the articles and some of the artwork and like the man in the desert ones and things like that. So you're starting to see that kind of where they're using old abandoned buildings even to to make them come to life. I think, wasn't there one we were looking at where it was the Santa Claus jumping around the front of the building and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. No, and you, you wonder as projectors get cheaper, um, are, is, is it going to be the keeping up with the Joneses and instead of having lights on your uh, outside trees in your garden and a couple of inflatable snowmen in your garden, are people going to start buying projectors and start projecting things on the side of their houses for Christmas? And how? Because yeah, I, I saw the other day when we were in the range at the Christmas stuff and they have actually little laser laser yeah. kind of projectors where they're projecting snowflakes and colored colored led like colored laser dots like snow falling and they're designed for indoor and outdoor use so and they're not they're really cheap so you can see that approach where you're talking about where people are going to start trying to replace it with true maybe holograms mm. of snowmen or whatever so you could actually see it going even further beyond holograms or 3d images of being projected onto your front of your lawn or something like that well if you're listening in and you have seen some great videos or great photos please do send them in so we can use them on all things tech.ie and um, now moving on logitech this is this is an interesting one and one that i i i still have to do a lot more reading on um, Plantonics bought, um, let's, let's get this the right way around. Plantonics bought um, Polycom earlier in 2018. I think I'm correct in saying that. And uh, then Logitech were going to buy out Plantronics. And then they pulled out of it. Uh, this was earlier in the month. Logitech International, a Swiss manufacturer of keyboards and webcams, said on uh, that it had ended discussions to acquire Plantronics, a US maker of Bluetooth earpieces and gaming headsets. The announcement came after Reuters reported that the, on negotiations between Logitech and Plantronics um, ended. Logitech confirmed the talks on Sunday, but they've now been terminated. Uh, Plantronics offered no immediate um, comments. Logitech... Comments. Yeah. Hmm. 
Logitech and Plantronics were hope, hoping to successfully conclude negotiations, but Logitech's board decided on Sunday to walk away from the potential deal, according to people familiar with the matter, who requested a nominee to discuss confidential discussions. Um, it was supposed to be a buyout of over three billion. Um, Logitech and Plantronics business have been under pressure as a result of new offerings being developed, um, and not from network gear makers such as Cisco, but from major technology companies such as Microsoft and Google own Alphabet. It's because, and this is what, we have discussed this before, Simon. Is there room for these type of video conferencing units? It's getting so widespread that the normal uh, Cisco, Polycom, Plantronics, people just want a pan zoom USB camera that plugs into a computer and away they go. And that's where Logitech are really in the market. They're doing, they're real. they have it, they're in the right place. They're, a lot of, some of it, like Crestron are shipping Logitech cameras with their Mercury units. So when you think about it, it, it they're really definitely right place. And I think what Pantronics were going to offer them was the headsets and the microphone, the headset microphones. So in the case of like, I'm using one of their products at the moment as, as well. So. You, you do um, you do see that Pantronics have a part that Logitech don't, and I think it was just trying to broaden Logitech's offerings in the marketplace. Um, it nearly sounds like it's a little bit like the whole Harman, AMX. Um, That's it. I was actually again, all those ones. At, at, at the conference again. I, I keep on plugging the LTSMG today, but. Uh, at at the conference, I was I was talking to the Harman guys and just realizing just how much stuff Harman actually look after. Harman and Samsung mm. product, like I I think we'll have to draw a little chart of Harman owned by Samsung who owns the following. So like even Samsung itself owning Harman, like we when you think of Samsung, what do you think of? You think of your mobile phone and your TV, but Samsung also make washing machines, dishwashers, microwave, probably microwaves. I, I probably have microwaves and, and are involved in car, car audio and all that stuff as well. Yeah. Like they're, you don't, I think over in Europe, we probably have a small sampling of what actually Samsung do sell. So all where, in 2019 are going to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants to play our, pay our flight, we fly first class and first class only. Um, <laughs> I bet you, that, uh, without reading the, uh, the, the show notes, Simon, founded in 1961, Plantronics' first products were lightweight headsets for airline pilots. But here's the question that we'll ask our audience. When did Logitech start off? And I didn't think it was that old. Yeah, I don't because I read the bit about the Plantronics and they were involved, they were the headsets worn by um the first moonwalkers. In, um, Neil Armstrong on a moonwalk in nineteen sixty nine. Or was involved in that as well somehow. And I think and it's like it just shows you their history is is deep. And they've been around in very important stages in history. But to answer that question, listeners, 1981 Logitech was founded. That just makes me feel old, son. I didn't, I didn't think Logitech was that old. <laughs> and it yeah. just shows you that technology for computers was required back then if it was computers they started out in, I presume. Yeah, connectivity and video conferencing. I wonder what video conferencing was like in 1981 or in the 1980s for that matter when we had that dial-up connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, we, we're short on time, I know. So we're going to move on, Simon, and ask um, you, what has been your tech toy of 2018? That you just went, wow, I like that. That's it. That's the thing. I don't actually have one particular. Like I things I really enjoyed. Like we got um an app at the Home Mini, the Google yeah. Home Mini, and that and that has um, been fun, um and uh, trying out things and um 
it trying to understand a two dash three year old and instead of going oh please repeat that or i didn't quite get that and 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 then um has, kind of get has rebecca got her own profile on the device no no she doesn't no no so it, it doesn't say hi rebecca to her no no. Uh, but but you, you get her. She walks across the room, going, "Okay, Google," and okay. so <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So she's trying to, and um, like we had a very funny episode recently. I, I was tweeting about it actually, where we were in shopping in Tesco, and there was an announcement over the PA in Tesco, um, and she asked, "What did Google say?" Well, Google is God. See, they, 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 so this is why yes. I'm going with with little two and three year olds. Google is God. Yeah. Um, we we found out just by accident, Simon, the other day, and this is one that we have played around with, and a little video to come with us, um, where you can ask Google to talk to Santa. You had great fun with this. Oh yeah, I think it went on for a good half an hour of uh, back and forward changing how it goes and yes yeah, santa basically it like it rings as if it rings this the north pole switch yeah. and the and you get the elves answer it and they put you through to santa in the workshop hello there north pole switchboard my name is gumdrop connecting you to santa in the recording studio just a sec Santa telephone. A phone call? Well, <laughs> hello. Uh, you caught me taking a little break from my nice list work to get ready for the big elf stock show. Yeah, watch it. You know, since you are already on the nice list, maybe you can help me out. I can't decide which band I should bring to the concert. Pick me, pick me. It would be wonderful if you made the decision for me. I don't want to make any of the elves feel bad. So... What do you say? Do you want to help me out? Yeah. So, let me ask you something. What's your favorite thing up in the sky? The sun or the moon? The uh, sun, I guess. Oh, it's brilliant. We see a lot of it here in the North Pole during June. <laughs> That's a science fact. Okay, tell me this. Do you like music that makes you jump around like a monkey? Yes. That's a fun way to get exercise. Like after you eat a hundred thousand cookies in one night. Damn. Next question. Okay. Which would make a better lead singer? A beeping robot? Or a talking bird? <coughs> talking bird? Oh, sure. I ask birds for directions all the time. Try this one. Where would you rather live? A brick building or a log cabin? Brick building? I don't know. Yes, brick buildings are nice. They usually have a nice flat landing surface on top. Okay, one more thing. Is it fun to hear loud crashing sounds like in a thunderstorm? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, oh, sure. Storms are exciting, especially when I'm way up high in my sleigh. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. I think you did it. Now I know the way to play the song. Bootsy! What time is it, Santa? It's funky time. Please assemble the members of the Brick House Chimneys and lay me down a funky beat. Jingle bells, funky bells, gotta dance and sway. Yeah. Let's go groove, bust out the moves, get down the Saturday. Do it now. Elves, get up, strut your stuff, you better get it. Hey, okay. shout and sing, it's your thing, just boogie, that's the way. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Woo. You did not fake the funk on that one, Booty. Oh, yeah. And thank you so much to our helper on the phone. It's really clever by Google. They really were uh, on the ball here, and that's real quirky. And I think it's really good publicity for their Google um, Home products. Now, all, all we wish that in 2019, and I keep on banging this drum until it happens, Google, please integrate Google's G Suite with Google Home so I can actually get my calendar on Google Home. One of these days, one of these days, they'll listen to me.
But it's funny, I don't, we don't use the calendar at all for, um, we, we actually use ours for playing music more than anything, okay. or the radio. Yeah. What do you listeners use your Google Home or your uh, Internet of Things device for at home? Please let us know. Allthingstech.ie is our website. All Things Techie Podcast, brought to you by two tech junkies, Justin Dawson and Simon Lang. For more, visit www.allthingstech.ie for all things techie.